as anyone with the fields, uh, with any knowledge of the field of sociology and anthropology could tell you, over the last century or so, explaining the origins of religion and how religion functions within a society have been some of its uh, most prominent concerns over that period of time. And uh, this book is one of the more recent contributions to that field. Um, it's called uh, Religion Explained, uh, the Evolutionary Origins of Religious Thought by Pascal Boyer. Um, explaining religion has been a cottage industry within the field of anthropology, um, at least since its academic institutionalization in the United States about a century ago. Pascal Boyer, uh, who is the Henry Luce Professor of Individual and Collective Memory at Washington University in St. Louis, rejects almost all of these traditional explanations out of hand in the first chapter of his book. He says that all attempts to explain religious thought, like uh, the urge to explain the origin of the universe, or the need to provide comfort or reassurance or consolation, a deliverance from mortality, the need to keep society together, the need to provide an objective basis for morality, etc., etc., all fail in some important way. Uh, unfortunately, what he offers in its place are convoluted and disorganized arguments and the occasional ad hoc rationalization. Like I said, uh, Boyer is an anthropologist himself um, and is mostly dissatisfied with the reasons that classical anthropology, you know, all the way back to James Fraser's The Golden Bow, has has offered for the persistence of religious belief, as noted above. In Beyond Belief, he attempts to fuse the precepts of cognitive psychology with evolutionary theory, and perhaps with a bit of sociobiology thrown in. His approach is one that's wholly rationalist and structuralist, and let me explain a bit about those words. Uh, in a sense, they're related. Rationalism, and I'm using the word in the sense that philosophers use the word, uh, that is, in a sense, opposed to empiricism, uh, suggests that the human mind is built in such a way of more elementary structures uh, which facilitate learning. That's not to say that we don't learn from the world around us, like empiricists suggest. Instead, it's an approach that assumes that the structure of the mind itself enables the acquisition of certain cognitive skills like language, belief, etc. Uh, some of you might be familiar with uh, Noam Chomsky and his idea of the universal grammar. Uh, the idea of the universal grammar is at its heart, I think, a, a rationalist idea. That is, it says that the day a baby is born, the very minute a baby is born, uh, that baby's brain has the necessary neural hardwiring and neural uh, networking in order to better, in order to facilitate the acquisition of knowledge. So basically, language and, and phonics and syntax and, and the shape of phonemes and all of that other stuff that you associate with linguistics, that's not the subject of this book, this is just a side note, all of that stuff that you associate with linguistics um, is somehow the, the, the way to build those things together in meaningful ways and to shape and build language is already in your brain the moment you're born. Of course, you, you learn and acquire the specifics of language through experience, through hearing your, your, your parents say words and, and shape sentences themselves, but you are built with that hard wiring from the day you're born. At least that's what Chomsky says. Structuralism, on the other hand, suggests that elements in a given domain, uh, in this instance religious belief, are impossible to understand without placing them in a larger overarching system or structure, or as Roland Bart or Claude Levi-Strauss were fond of saying, structuration. Boyer begins by discussing what supernatural concepts are like and he suggests that mental ideas are like templates. For example, we have the template of animal in our head, which might contain many ideas like needs to eat, or reproduces, or produces waste. 
The thing about these templates is that they're remarkably adaptable. We use these big idea templates like animal to explain the living phenomena that we see. Boye suggests that this template works because it's structurally so, clo so close to the way religious or supernatural ideas function. Um, which ch and religious or supernatural ideas function in such a way as to change those templates in one very important way. They have one and only one, he says, idea in them that intuitively goes against everything else in the template. For example, the template woman might include a lot of things, but um, the idea can have a child without having sex obviously is not one of them. Uh, similarly, uh, the template for a uh, human being would not contain rises, you know, rises from the dead. Uh, and of course, both of these are found in Christian theology, uh, in the, uh, the virgin birth and the uh, assumption. Psychological experiments have shown that stories with pedestrian details are very difficult for people to retain, while the very rare fantastical element makes the story much more prominent in the memory, and this might have something to do with the persistence of certain fantastical supernatural beliefs, like people raising from, rising from the dead, or people being born um, from virgins, uh, or making the blind see, or whatever else. As Boyer puts it, the religious precept preserves all the relevant default inferences, except the ones that are explicitly barred by the counterintuitive element, and thus a combination of one violation with preserved expectations is probably a cognitive optimum, a concept that is both attention-grabbing and that allows for rich inferences. Furthermore, the mind that creates this series of rich inferences is the rule and not the exception. Boyer gives other kinds of intuitive understanding, like the physics of solid objects, which he calls intuitive physics, a physical causation, goal-directed motion, and the ability to link structure to function. And these arguments take up about the first third of the book. Unfortunately, much of the book after that is a bit of a mess as far as trying to uh, present a cogent, coherent argument is concerned. From here on out we get answers uh, to chapter headings like why ritual and why gods and spirits and why is religion about death that do in fact provide answers but seem to have no direct relevance to the questions raised in the first third of the book. Here and there he'll pick up the idea of the template, which I discussed, uh, which he spent so long developing, but mostly ignores it in the formulation of his later arguments. A saving grace of the book um, is what are, are, are the, what he calls progress boxes that he intersperses throughout the text, uh, which sum up the arguments in case you've lost the thread of his thoughts somewhere, which is a not unlikely prospect. The progress boxes are usually um, are used liberally in the first part of the book and appear nowhere in the last two thirds except on the last few pages, which uh, there's a, a about a three page progress bo box which constitutes uh, a basic recapitulation of the entire uh, book. And for someone interested in Boyer's approach, his, his uh, distinctive evolutionary approach, which doesn't, um, and who doesn't care to read the entire book, I would uh, certainly suggest skipping to the last few pages, reading that big progress bo box, and you will uh, walk away with the big ideas and even several of the more important details. While this isn't nearly anywhere close to the uh, first book, which tries to explain religion or uh, myriad and sundry other uh, social phenomena through an evolutionary lens, I really do appreciate this book for being able to offer um, a fairly in vogue approach to uh, a divisive and controversial topic. 
Uh, there are some interesting ideas here, like that of the template and how religious memes need to violate one intuitive idea on a template to be evolutionarily successful enough to be transmitted. I just wish Boye had been able to better follow the lines of his own logic or to tie the loose threads together into something a bit more cohesive. He does provide a chapter by chapter section for further reading and perhaps in uh, a number of these books better, exposi better expositions of his ideas can be found but I haven't had a chance to look into any of them yet. Uh, an interesting book, um, a lot to agree with and certainly a lot to disagree with. In Pascal Boyer's Religion Explained, The Evolutionary Origins of Religious Thought.